Hi guys, Olive here here today to share with you what I'm planning to read in July of 2020. Starting off with my classic pick for the month, I am planning on reading Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. This is a classic adventure novel following a scientist, his nephew, and then their guide as they follow the scientist's extremely eccentric belief that there are volcanic tubes leading into the center of the Earth. It is very hot outside as we head into the month of July, so this seemed like an appropriate selection. My pick off of my my five-star nonfiction prediction list for this month will be A Natural History of the Senses by Diane Ackerman. This is a look into the five human senses, and from what I read about this book, it seems to be a mixture of scientific information and also anecdotes relating back to the senses. I have been really looking forward to this one. I do have high hopes for it, even though my history with micro histories is a little bit spotty. I also made a mental note a while back that when I read this book, I would very much like to read it alongside Perfume, the story of a murderer by Patrick Suskind. This is a novel about a young man with an absurdly acute sense of smell. He first studies under a perfumer, and then he becomes dangerously obsessed with the way one specific woman smells. Given the subtitle of this book, you can kind of guess where that story is going. That very strong sensory element to this book made me believe that it would be a perfect fiction match for A Natural History of the Senses. When I've been selecting books for my TBRs lately, I've been making far more of an active effort to try to read books off of my shelves, particularly this far one behind me, which houses all of my fiction books. What I've been buying lately has been predominantly nonfiction, but I'm running out of room on my nonfiction shelf here and the one across the room. So it's my long term hope to read a good majority of the books off of this shelf, and then replace some of them with nonfiction. So one hardcover from that shelf that I'll be picking up this month is The Book of Night Women by Marlon James. This book follows a woman who was born into slavery on a Jamaican sugar plantation. When she comes of age, she's recruited into a group of women, the night women, who have long been planning a slave revolt. I have heard that this one is brilliant. I've actually never read any Marlon James. It'll be good to finally pick up one of his books. And speaking of vengeance, I'm also planning on reading The Tiger by John Valent. This is the unbelievable true story of a tiger in a remote Russian village who was stalking and killing people as though it had grand designs against everyone living in this town. This is one that I showed off in my most recent haul. I have been meaning to read this one for a very long time. Another book on apex predators I'm planning on reading in the month of July is Emperors of the Deep by William McKeever. This is obviously a book all about sharks, and in it the author corrects some common misconceptions about the ancient creatures. Since the Discovery Channel decided to reschedule Shark Week, which is normally all always held in July, but instead this year was held on a random weekend in April, Shark Weekend, I guess, I will have to fill the Shark Week shaped hole in my heart with this book. Another one that I thought would suit July very well is Hotel Scarface by Robin Farzad. This is another work of nonfiction, but this one focuses on the Hotel Mutiny in Miami, which was a coke den and house of debauchery in the 1970s, and it provided the inspiration for the movie Scarface. This is probably going to be a wild ride. Back to fiction, I'm also finally planning on reading Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This has been a longtime favorite of Joss from Squibbles Reads who was a booktuber that I got started with back in the day. This book is frequently marketed as a Jane Eyre retelling, but from all the reviews I've seen about this book, it seems that the heroine of this book more takes inspiration from Charlotte Bronte's leading lady, because this Jane is also definitely no bird. No net ensnares her, or her murderous rage. It seems like this one is definitely very dark, and it also seems like it maintains a lot of those good gothic vibes that I love so much about Jane Eyre. I'm also going to be buddy reading The Word Exchange by Alina Graydon with the wonderful Tori Morrow. We are both huge fans of Lexicon by Max Berry, and we've both been yearning for a similar type of book ever since we read it. I am not quite convinced that there is anything quite like that book out there in the world, but this one does to have some similar elements. This is a dystopian novel in which words themselves are first commoditized 
and then are taken away entirely. From everything I read about this book, it seems to be a book for word nerds in every meaning of that term. I am very excited to read this one with Tori. And then finally, I'm going to be participating in Jane Austen July, which is hosted by Katie from Books and Things and Marissa at Blatantly Bookish. I will leave links to their announcement videos down in the description box below. They have challenges for the month. They also are going to be hosting two different read-alongs for two of Jane Austen's novels. Highly recommend you join in. I am technically going to be taking on two of the challenges. I had actually selected two books to read for Jane Austen July before they even announced it, and it just so happened that these two books fit in to these two challenges. For the challenge of read something by Jane Austen that is not one of her six novels, I'm going to read Lady Susan. I have actually now read all six of Jane Austen's novels, very happy about that, but I've not yet read this epistolary novella all about a manipulative widow. This seemed like a good time to do so. And then for the challenge, read a nonfiction work about Jane Austen or her time, I'm going to read Gentlemen of Uncertain Fortune by Rory Muir. In case you didn't already know this, in Regency England, it was always the oldest son who inherited the family fortune, the family estate, which left the younger sons in a very disadvantageous position. This book has stories of how those younger sons made their way in the world, if they took up professions, what they did with their lives. This book is published by Yale University Press, so I'm assuming it will lean toward the academic side, but I am fine with that because I am fascinated by this topic. I do also have a few arcs from NetGalley that are due to come out in the month of July that I probably will read and review. I just haven't decided which ones I'm taking on yet, so I won't mention any as certainties here in this video. But other than those possibilities, the books I mentioned are all the books I will be prioritizing in the month of July. As always, please do let me know if you've read any of these books, if you've heard of any of them, or if you're now interested in them after seeing them in this video, you can put that or any other more general comments or questions you may have in the comment section below. But if you'd prefer to connect with me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.